this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is meant to be a review of something that possibly you studied in intro physics. And I think if we go back and think about beats, it's going to be really helpful to understand where we're going with wave packets. So this is a, also a little bit out of the order of the book. So the book first kind of goes through the momentum eigenstates and does some Fourier transform stuff and then gets to the idea of wave packets. So I want to take a pause before we jump into the math and try to help you think through uh, conceptually, qualitatively, where we're trying to go. So the idea of beats is that it's a, a sound phenomena, it's something we hear when you have two sound sources that are very, very close, but not exactly the same in frequency. So I have no idea if this is going to work, but I've actually brought two of these bells with me. This one is at 441 hertz, and the other one is at 440 hertz. So they sound really, really similar, but if we thought about plotting kind of the amplitude of vibrations of the sound reaching our ear as a function of time, it would have a slightly different frequency or a slightly different period. So if I hit them at the same time and try to position this so they're mm, similarly positioned with respect to the microphone, again, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, I hope that on the recording you'll be able to hear the beats. What you're listening for is kind of a modulation in the volume of the sound. The frequency of that modulation is one second, and the reason for that is that it would be basically the period difference um, is going to be given by the difference in the frequency. So one over one, one second. Okay, so that's the idea, that we're hearing this modulation in volume. So where does that come from? This is a phenomena that we can understand in, in great detail, just kind of qualitatively. So I have one of these that is vibrating a certain way. And in this case here, I'm thinking about this as time. And so this is now period one. Then the second one is slightly different in time. So I'll make the second one be slightly faster so it peaks quicker and quicker and quicker. And now it's almost entirely out of phase. Uh, and I've maybe done a bad job of that. But the idea being that when we go to add them together, you see that here, you're basically getting it out of phase, and then here it's back in phase. So it's hard to draw this exactly, but the idea being if we then, so here this is T2. So not necessarily on the same scale because I think it's too hard to see, but if for instance, we had the real situation of the 440 and the 441 Hertz, what's happening is you're getting this kind of increase and then a decrease and then an increase and so on. So this isn't necessarily related to that. So beats is this idea that we have the two different frequencies and when we add them together you now get this. So notice that there's this envelope here and then there's this little squiggle on the inside. So Again, when we think about this, we can think about frequency or we can think about period, but this here is basically going to be given by your, your average frequency, or we could call it, kind of call that your average. So I'll call this average period. And then this big envelope is given by the difference. So the reason that I'm trying to talk about this is that this is going to relate to the idea of wave packets. So I've labeled these axes as time, because if this is sound, really what we're talking about here is time. But you could imagine this instead being some sort of phenomena in space. Say I had two, um, two sources of water waves and that they were slightly, again, with different frequencies, that's going to actually create um, different water propagations. And we could then start to think about that in terms of position. 
So when we meet this phenomena, originally in intro physics, it's a sound phenomena, which means it's fundamentally a phenomena of frequency or period. But we could use the exact same idea and apply it to position. Now, there's a few more things that's important to notice here. One is that when we've done this out in time, we're kind of considering one point, right? So if I'm plotting this in time, I'm considering one point, such as, for instance, the point reaching, the point at our, uh, the entrance to our ears, for instance. That works. Um, so we don't necessarily have this moving in time, right? So waves themselves, we have what's happening in time and what's happening in space. And so this work, just considering one point. So the next thing to, to think about is this idea here that I have this nice big, um, this, this nice big envelope. Now I called that, you know, the, the delta T, but really it isn't like, oh, the bigger we make the period between them, it isn't, it isn't really that. It's more like, you know, that T is going as one over delta F. So we want to actually have a really small frequency difference between them. And what way you can think about this is say I add together a wave that has a really long uh, frequency, or, sorry, really long period compared to one that has a really short period. Well, even if we make the amplitude the same, what this would sum to is, is something like that. Not a great picture that you can't see at all. Okay, pink marker's done. Okay, let me try that again. So, right, so we have kind of this up-down motion on top of a big one. This clearly does not look like beats, right? This is not what we're talking about when we're talking about beats. So what that tells you is that the frequency needs to be very similar between these two. Because these were so different, you don't get something that looks like beats. Here, we got beats because the frequency or the, or the period were pretty similar. And here even, I, they got out of phase very quickly. Here you notice that it takes a long time, many individual oscillations, to actually get to be out of phase completely. So here they're completely in phase, here they're completely out of phase. So again, this we would call the envelope, but then within the envelope, we still have a wave. Now one thing to note is that they go out of phase and then they come right back in phase. So this is going to be a repeating pattern. So if we wanted to start adding more waves, we could actually do a better job of making them go out of phase. We could, in particular, add more waves such that they spend a longer time out of phase. And that's what we're going to get to see with wave packets. So the other thing to think about if we start saying, OK, now let's have this actually be a spatial phenomena. Instead of time, let's have this be a spatial phenomena. Great, because when we think about our quantum waves, we're usually thinking about functions of position. So if this now becomes a function of position, we could also imagine this whole thing moving in time. So one thing to keep in mind is that these little bits, right, kind of the, the shorter wavelength components, they're moving at one speed, but then the envelope can be moving at a different speed. So when we talk about phase velocity and group velocity, we're now thinking about this in position, which is different than beats, and we can have the envelope moving differently than these. I can't really draw that on here, and my hope is to do some videos just kind of showing some animations. Um, but really, my hope was to remind you a little bit of what, what beats are, and that fundamentally, this is a phenomena that's going to be repetitive, and it's going to be due to waves that are fairly similar, and that when we met them, we were adding two together. So now, when we get to wave packets, we're actually adding more than two together, and eventually we'll get to continuous distributions. So the reason that we're about to do a bunch of complicated Fourier math is that we are going from just individual contributions, like single waves, to wave packets, and we actually have to add up a bunch of waves to do that. And really what we want to think about is how those oscillate in space. So instead of thinking about, well, it's just a sign of position, what's interesting here is that, oh, they're slightly different in frequency. 
And so when we move to position, it will be, oh, they're slightly different in wave number. So that's, that's why we're about to do some hard math, is to get to the quantum mechanical version of this, which is where wave packets come from. And I would argue that's the most interesting thing we do this semester. So hopefully this gives you some conceptual um, context. And again, keep in mind, so much of this makes much more sense when you can interact with it and actually see things evolve in time. So please, please, please use those simulations online that will really help you play with this.